Okay, today I want to show you um, just some simple uh, tools that you'll need um, for uh, drift fishing for um, trout in uh, small rivers or small uh, streams, little tributaries, stuff like that. Um, first is uh, the fishing rod. Um, you see this is a spinning rod. Um, and basically this is a uh, lightweight, not an ultralight, but a lightweight um, seven foot rod. The reason it's uh, lightweight is and not ultralight is so that we can drift fish um, when conditions are like they are at, at the present time. Um, even the small tributaries are, are flowing um, higher than normal and that allows me to use um, heavier weights whereas with a, an ultralight rod the rod itself will be you know bent over like you've got a, a 10 pound fish on there or whatever just from the weight itself um, that's not the case with with the lightweight rod we can run um, you probably can't tell how big these split shot are but these are like uh, uh, number sevens they're pretty good size substantially larger than uh, than a, a typical BB size that you'll use um, in the summertime anyway uh, we've got a uh, 1000 series reel um, this happens to be a Shimano. It's not a high dollar reel and not a high dollar rod, so you don't have to have um, You know top of the line gear for this type of fishing um, One thing I will say is that if you do have a cheap rod like this um, When you are drift fishing in other words when the when the weight is bouncing on the bottom um, a little trick that I like to use is to hold my finger on the line and that allows me to, to feel every little bump. Whereas if you're holding it like this, um, the weight is not transferring on a cheap rod to the blank like it does on a high dollar rod. So one little advantage is you'll pick up every little bump um, just like a high dollar rod if you put your finger right here on the main line and feel it along. And you'll feel that even the tiniest little nibbles um, with your finger like you would holding it like this on a high dollar rod so quick little easy tip there um, a 1000 series spinning reel typically that's a small size reel and um, these reels will hold uh, like 140 to 150 yards of uh, four pound test and approximately 100 to 110 yards of six pound test um, I've got this thing spooled up with um, high vis yellow uh, braided line. This is 20 pound diameter, um, excuse me, 20 pound test, but it's a four pound diameter, so it's super thin, um, but it's strong. And the only reason I do that, I use high vis for one one thing, just so that I can um, always know where the line is, even in bright bright sunshine, um, I can see the line and uh, and mend it as needed, and I I know exactly where I'm at. Um, and uh, the reason I use braided line is because when I get stuck, and you will get stuck plenty of times, I can have a little bit more backbone and a little bit more muscle to, to pull myself free of a snag and, um, and get all my stuff back. I don't want to spend time tying knots. If, if at all possible, I don't want to tie any knots. So I pre-rig stuff like this at home before I hit the river um, or the stream. And that way I've got setups completely ready to go. So all I have to do is maybe tie one knot and, uh, and I'm back in business and fishing. You need to spend your time um, fishing and not uh, tying knots. If you're tying knots all day, you will not catch fish. You're going to have a, a rough day. So spend the time and tie these up. Um, get little, uh, little uh, Ziploc bags like this. See this says six pound test, so I know I've got six pound. I've got the little bead tied there. It's a number eight hook. It's all pre-rigged, ready to go. And this is rigged up for one of these little mini egg clusters. So if I lose it, um, all I've got to do, and I keep a needle like this one in my tackle box, all I've got to do is take out a, a uh, scented egg cluster thread it right down, tie one knot, and I'm back in business, ready to fish again. And the length is all 
pre-rigged, pre-set up. I might have to trim maybe six inches at the most, but this is all ready to go. Um, and as far as what to use, um, I when I'm fishing for trout, the only two things that I use, and I'll, I'll change color, um, but I typically won't change the size. I'll use the mini egg clusters. If it's clear, I'll use um, shrimp pink almost exclusively, sometimes the peach color that we make. Um, if there's color to the water, I will use uh, uh, fluorescent pink, which is this color in an egg cluster, or um, hot red like this one, or orange, or fluorescent pink. Um, hot red and fluorescent pink, um, if you don't want to you know, carry five different colors with you, hot red, uh, and the fluorescent pink, I never don't catch fish with those if there's color to the water. And like I said, um, if you want to just have one one color on hand for the clear water, um, shrimp pink is uh, tough to beat. Same goes for the worms. Sometimes the fish don't want an egg cluster and they're just looking for a worm. Uh, fluorescent pink, a bubble gum, which I don't have here. Um, everybody knows what the bubble gum worm looks like anyway. And um, a natural. When the water is clear, um, or even when visibility is just decent, this natural worm is really, really tough to beat. I've caught countless amounts of fish on this natural worm um, drift fishing. I've caught everything from um, rainbow trout and, um, and kokanee on this to um, chinook salmon, steelhead, I mean even crappie and bluegill. This, this worm is really, really tough to beat and rigged up just like this. There's a separate video on how to rig this worm and a separate video on how to rig this up too. But these are, are basically your, um, your basics, the, the basic essentials for drift fishing in a small stream. Um, the only difference is maybe you'll change the weight. You can see how this is rigged up here. Um, this happens to be a snap swivel. Sometimes I won't use a snap and I'll just tie my barrel. Uh, my main line right to the barrel swivel um, but instead of trimming my tag end I leave it and then I, I put the um, split shot right there and I can drift fish with that and if you get snagged the the um, split shot will pull right off and you get your setup back and you just have to put more split shot on another thing that works good um, if I'm running like a, like an eighth ounce or so um, is an egg sinker. This happens to be a half ounce, but um, egg sinkers are a great way to drift fish, and I find that I lose a lot less with an egg sinker. Um, but if I know the water really well, um, or if I'm just uh, you know out of fresh out of these, everybody's got split shot on hand. So um, this is a real simple way to go. Um, other than that, I mean, you need to learn what the lead feels like, the the bounce, and once you feel um, once you feel what it, uh, a trout, the take on a trout, and it's typically a tap, tap, tap kind of a take, um, you'll be catching lots and lots of fish. And, and don't forget about that trick of holding your finger on this. You can use those cheap fishing rods like this one and, um, and catch just as many fish. Uh, if you can afford a high dollar rod, I mean, it's always nice to have. But if you're like me and you fish for, um, any kind of fish that puts up a fight, you know, if you buy the high dollar rod for for every one of those um, situations, you'd probably be um, out, you know, a good ten thousand dollars on high dollar fishing rods. So you don't have to have one if you can afford it. Great. If not, um, use that trick and you'll catch a lot of fish and you'll have fun doing it. So anyway, thanks for watching.